This is called How to Rate an Archtop Guitar with 20 questions. And you'd number it like you would a hotel stay, you know, on one, one through five, three being really no opinion, right? So, um, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if other people are going to want this, you know, but we'll, we'll do this little video on it and that's what we're doing right now and then I'll post it. So basically you have to kind of, you get the guitar and then you rate it on how you feel about it. So playability, comfort, as far as the body dimensions. And that's something that really is, is something that's really important because body dimensions, is it too big? Is it too small? Do you feel like you're crunching over it? Do you feel like you're riding it? You know, so, you know, this guitar is a little fatter than a Heritage and a, and a uh, uh, Eastman. So, you know, sometimes that can be awkward, you know, so... You've got to rate that. Okay, then you rate the top. You, you say, what, what is the top? You know, solid, laminate, blah, blah, blah. And how does that, how do you feel about that? So then you put, an, you put a check there, you know. And then here's another important question. Where does the neck join the body? So this joins the body on the 14th fret, which is like most guitars, most jazz guitars. Some like a heritage, excuse me, um, not a heritage, uh, like a Hofner with so many more frets, it might be the 16th fret, in which case it feels a little further. Some of the older guitars would join it at the 12th frets. Uh, so, you know, you got to figure out what do you like, do you like that, you know, so number that. Um, the binding, and when you're looking at a guitar, you want to look at the binding condition of the binding. So, um, uh, so that's another thing you want to make a note of. And then I think here's something that's that's important. The, just the overall beauty of the guitar and where's all the nicks. <laughs> and you put that down because you're, you know, you. I like a guitar that like, oh man, that is so cool. I, I love the way that looks. And, uh, you know, guitars are part art and part instrument, you know, it's, totally art you know like so um and then you rate the the hardware what is the condition of the hardware is it gassed off and decrepit you know and, and so you rate that uh playability of the neck and the thickness of the neck i think that's something that really needs consideration although you can generally adapt to to a lot of different things but this particular neck, to me, has the feeling like I could actually put my thumb over it. Which I can never do that on, on a thin, the thinner necks for some reason. I can't do that. <laughs> I've never been one to do that. Anyways, uh, the neck material, the fretboard material. How does, and, you know, if some people are so bent on... Ebony, you know, so if this has rosewood, you know, you'd mark it maybe a, a two. If it, if you're totally into ebony, you, you give it a five. Okay, scale length. What is the length of this? You know, what do you, what works for you? Is it 24 and a half, 25 or 25 and a half? Which is it? Uh, nut width, another important issue to consider, right? You know, 11 sixteenths is a good average nut width. Usually, uh, like a lot of Eastmans are one and three quarters. If you're playing a lot down here and you got big fat hands, one and three quarters is kind of nice. The Johnny Smith one and three quarters. I personally have been getting into one and nine sixteenths. So I'm tempted to take some of my guitars and put a different nut on it. So, nut width. The fret profiles. Okay, so when I got this guitar, the the frets 
on here, it, it, it wasn't like they were poking out. They, they weren't poking out because it's got binding on them. So they weren't sharp. However, the end here was, it's like humped. Um, so in other words, it's it stuck up high here, right here. And it kind of, it's like I, you put your hand across it and then and it's like, man, this is like speed bumps like this, you know? So I spent a lot of time and I filed, you can, I didn't get as much up here because I don't play up here, but I took those, just the end of the fret and kind of took it down a little bit. So these frets were perfect and, and so, I did that. You know, I'm not I'm not a guy that wants to have my frets dressed and all that stuff. I like a naked fret. You know, when you take it to these luthiers sometimes, I'm not that happy after if they do, you know, a leveling and stuff, you know. For most most of the time I don't I don't I don't think you need it. Um, okay, fret profile, and of course you're going to look at it and see if there's a bunch of devits in it and stuff. Uh, pickup type. And, oh, sound. Okay, you gotta you, you look at it and you think, and then you got to hear it objectively and think, make a judgment on the sound. Maybe circle one of these warm, punchy, fat, thin. Okay, and then rate that sound. Now here's another thing that that comes into play right there, is um, playing applications. So when you get the, the guitar, you got to say to yourself, when am I going to be playing this thing, and what am, what kind of things am I am I going to be doing? Am I going to do solo work? Am I going to be playing with a trio, a quartet, a big band? Am I going to be playing blues? It gets, you know you're not going to. You know, it, are we, am I going to be at high volumes? So you got to make that judgment. And then the feedback potential, you know, usually a 17 inch with a floater has a tendency to feedback pretty good. Some some guitars can f just feedback, man. They, they just do. Um, pickup type and, and the position like we talked about. So you would rate that and then... Uh, Attainability and rareness of the guitar. And so you might, you know, you look at it and you think, how many of these have I seen and is it attainable? You know, it's one thing to get like a, uh, you know, like that Red L5 I got. You know, that's that's a one-off kind of thing. And is it attainable? And uh, it's, it's totally rare, but it's not so attainable. And then you look at it, uh, a guitar, and you think price and value. You know, is it worth it? And is it going to be worth it someday? Uh, that's another thing to consider. And then finally, you want to make to get a good look at the tuners. Tuners can be replaced, but you want to you want to make sure that it, they don't have flat spots or in there or something. And then the bridge type, you want to take a look at the condition of the bridge. It's a tunematic. A lot of times, it, you know, it's so corroded and, and stuff and it's kind of a mess. If it's an old, uh, an old uh, rosewood bridge, you know, a lot of those are very dark sounding because the wood is soft. So you got to look at that. And then lastly, you want to make sure the truss rod works. Okay. So, so when I looked at this guitar here and there's what I wrote okay so I think I wrote five eighths uh, uh, three and five eighths on the body depth and I wrote I ranked that a four because it's fat it's fat there's no question about it um, sometimes uh, the uh, like 575 is a little more comfortable and so this is how I kind of rated this guitar that we're looking at right here. Neck joins the body on the 14th fret. I put a star there because that definitely means a lot. That's a big deal to me. Another big deal is the neck material. Not, not so much the fretboard material, but the back mahogany. or I like a three-piece neck. 
or five piece. Not with this to me, I would label this sound as punchy and fat. Warm, it's all of those. So the pickup is on the 22nd fret like we talked about, that's a big deal to me. I would use this guitar in probably any playing situation. Except, you know, a rock, classic rock gig or something. And price to value, too much. The plating and the flats, the plating is beautiful. It's just fantastic. So it's got, I rated it as a 4.66, <laughs> which is pretty dang good for some picky old dude. So that's that's a good way, I think, when you, you look at your guitars, because I'm looking at mine, I'm thinking, I mean, you, you, you appreciate them for what they are, and then you think, uh, I got to make some decisions on what I like because I can adapt to most everything. So anyway, I hope that was, um, did that make sense to you, Wes? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think y we sh you should send that to me and then I can, I'll, I'll make it a Google Doc and I'll, we can put it in the description. Uh mm. And then people can can oh. look at it and then print it up, and so people can have it and just be like a public document. Oh, good. Yeah. So. Hi, Rich here again. I just wanted to say thanks for checking out my videos. If you like it, hit the thumbs up button, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and sign up for those notifications so you can see all the cool guitar videos we put out each week. If you want more lessons right now, I have hundreds of them at guitarcollegelibrary.com. Check out our low price monthly streaming memberships. And if you want to learn jazz, check out my course, Jazz Guitar Improv. I take beginner jazz players and get them playing awesome solos on the fly. You'll see the link for the JGI course in the description below. Hey, thanks again for watching my channel. We'll see you again real soon with a new video.